to another live stream. Go ahead and uh, relax and get ready for another good one. I want to thank everybody for joining me today and tonight. And of course, I'm going to be going over a slide presentation with you. Check the description box below. All right. <clears throat> you guys give me a few more seconds. I'm going to grab me some water. And again, thank you everyone for joining me today. All right, guys, thank you so much for your patience. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about narcissistic personality. And, you know, sometimes they use priming as a tactic or as a control tactic. Okay, so of course, if you want to follow along, please check the description box below for that link to the slide. Okay, so uh, using priming, actually priming is another way of saying, okay, grooming, when narcissists groom, in order to control other people to manipulate a situation in their favor, okay? And uh, this especially goes for the third party situation. Narcissists often have a third party, right? Third party situationships that are going on. They usually have a network of those. All right, let me go ahead and make sure I have on the right. Yep, got it, got it, got it, check, check. All right. Just want to check something real quick, guys. Hold on just a second. Fabulous. Okay, there we go. All right. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Narcissist personality often seek out those that they consider as safe victims in order to manipulate and control situations. Unfortunately, as a result of gaslighting, some who are also groomed by narcissistic personality might come to believe that their ideas are their own. Simply put, narcissists like to use what is called NLP, okay, or neuro linguistic programming. This is just another way of saying that they will play with your mind in order to manipulate situations in their favor. So for instance, they may pull a shenanigan, right? They may say something or do something in order to influence you to think, behave, and or feel a particular emotion. You may think it's you, okay? Not saying that you're losing your mind or anything like that, or you, that you don't have a mind of your own. No, narcissists often will use this tap or well, these tactics to, <clears throat> glad I got me some water here. Mm. All right, they will use these tactics in order to manipulate the situation, okay? So you may think it's your idea perhaps to get them a gift for their birthday and a, a very expensive gift at that. But narcissists often will set that scenario up whereas it will turn out in their favor. In other words, for their birthday, right? You may get them a very expensive get, gift, but you really can't afford it. So you may go broke for a little while trying to get the narcissist a particular gift. Why? Because you want to please him or her. You perhaps want to be on their side, their good side, right? Good graces or what have you. Narcissists will often hint to you long before their birthday that they like expensive gifts. That's another way that they may manipulate a situation in their favor. Okay, so narcissist personality, they often seek those out that they consider as safe victims. Now, back in 20, I believe early 2017, maybe late 2017, I did a video about safe victims. Okay, narcissists often will scope people out. Unfortunately, they will also scope out children and consider them, perhaps some of them, as safe victims. Safe victims are considered those that narcissists may uh, see that they don't have a lot of people around him or her that may care for him or her or may protect him or her should the narcissist want to do something to him or her or pull it to, you know, a shenanigan, right? In order to manipulate a situation in their favor. 
So narcissists will groom people or prime people in order to manipulate a situation. Okay. And fortunately the result of them gaslighting, that's just another way of putting it, right? They're gaslighting people. Some people may end up thinking, feeling, okay, or even behaving as if they want to rescue the narcissist instead of looking at the narcissist as having predatory aims. And this is very unfortunate, right? So narcissists often scope people out as, you know, and determine whether or not, not only are they primed for source supply, but are they safe victims? You know, in other words, a safe victim is someone that the narcissist doesn't have to worry about, you know, uh, someone, they don't have to worry about interference from other people who may care for the so-called safe victim, right? But the safe victim is someone that usually the narcissist has scoped out and has determined doesn't have a lot of people around him or her, or they don't have a lot of support should the narcissist want to try something. Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> Due to gaslighting techniques, those who are source supply of the narcissist might begin to question their own sanity, identity, and sense of their reality. Narcissist personality types often seem to feel empowered by psychologically manipulating others. Okay, so I just mentioned something about the gaslighting techniques. But another thing that narcissists often do, and, and see, this is, this is so calculated, guys. When narcissists, they will go ahead and they will play with somebody's mind to the point where they will question their identity, they will question their sense of reality, and they will question their sanity. And this is exactly what the narcissist wants. Because when a person is in this vulnerable state, they are also under a suggestive state, right? The narcissist can suggest certain things, right? In order to manipulate him or her, manipulate them further, control them even more. You know, and some of us have seen, unfortunately, people who narcissists have uh, coined or has determined that they are prime for source supply. We can see, you know, cause sometimes they will go as far as to make excuses for the narcissist behavior. When you and I may look at the narcissist and say, okay, that, you know, type of behavior is outrageous. But there are some people, unfortunately, who have ended up enabling the narcissist because they are, you know, again, they are making excuses for their behavior. When their behavior, when a narcissist's behavior tends to be outrageous and sometimes very cold and calculated. But due to gaslighting techniques, guys, some narcissists are often, okay, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say all the time, but it is quite often that narcissists are able to get somebody in the crowd to enable him or her to make, to make excuses for their behavior or to even belittle the effect of their BS, okay? Or the damages that they may leave behind due to some of these tactics here. But narcissistic personality types, you know, they often seem to feel empowered by psychologically manipulating others. They like to look at their, their handiwork. And I don't know about you guys, but I, I think that's disgusting. Okay. Narcissists, they, sometimes they like to sit back and look at their handiwork. For instance, in a third party situation, narcissists like to sit back and pit people against each other and they bask in all the drama, but they don't anticipate the karma after they have done such a thing, right? They don't participate. Oh, pardon me. They don't anticipate. They don't look at what may be coming down the pike for them. They're not thinking that they may have to suffer the consequences of their actions. But, you know, once again, when narcissists are priming people, they're simply grooming them. I don't mean to use the word simply like I'm belittling that uh, whole dynamic, but they are grooming. So when they're priming people, they are grooming people 
as a tactic in order to manipulate and control. So once the narcissist deems that they can control, when they have determined that they can control the situation with particular people, then the narcissist may actually become overly confident. They may start to get sloppy, okay? Especially if they have a drinking problem. If there are such you know pharmaceutical they may you know they may start doing things that perhaps they wouldn't normally do okay if they weren't under certain influences narcissistic personality types they often like to sit back and look at their handiwork and they feel so empowered they feel godlike right they feel like they can do no wrong. No one's, no one's going to check them. No one's going to stop them. So when they're looking for safe victims, this is often what they do. Narcissistic personality, when they, when they find a safe victim, they often become overly confident in misusing the energy body of that so-called safe victim or safe victims. And this is why I say, unfortunately, sometimes they look for little ones. Okay. They look for little ones. And those that they, you know, they, they tend to think are beneath them or inferior to him or her, right? They often look for people like this and they feel overconfident and they feel empowered sometimes. It just seems like they really like to sit back and, and enjoy and, and bask in all of the drama of the damages that they may cause in other people's lives. And very often they think they're going to get away with it all. Narcissistic personality often places blame on others, especially those with empathic, empathic traits. Guilt and fear are fed on by narcissists. Therefore, social anxiety can occur. Priming and grooming are often applied in a wash, rinse, and repeat fashion to achieve the desired effect. Okay, so, so narcissists, they, they just, once, once again, they think they're going to get away with it all. Right. So when they are treating people in this way, unfortunately, the result could be that some people will suffer or experience anxiety. OK, social anxiety. We, you know, some of us have heard about this when they get in, you know, to a group situation, they may feel they may become very timid. So in social settings, a person who suffers from, from anxiety, they're. Uh, symptoms may be impacted or it may increase or they may feel more intense in a social setting situation. And this is because they have been groomed or primed by a narcissist. Okay. This is not the only reason, but this is since we're talking about narcissism and we're talking about narcissist relationships, there are some people who will experience social anxiety Okay, so priming and grooming are often applied repeatedly, right? In a wash, rinse, and repeat fashion. They keep applying it over and over because the narcissist finds that these tactics work. So, of course, they're going to continue to apply it as many times as possible. Unfortunately, due to having enablers and sometimes even recruiting certain people to play a dysfunctional role of flying monkey, the narcissist feels that they can never get caught. They're riding high off of this, right? They feel like they, they will never, not only will they never be caught, but some people will join them and actually, you know, encourage this type of uh, behavior. Okay. So uh, don't be, you know, don't be fooled. Some narcissists, they will go pretty far in order to manipulate a situation in their favor. Sometimes they will do uneth unethical things, even on the job, not just at home, but at work. They may uh, do certain things to manipulate the situation in their favor. Somebody else may be going to, for the same promotion that they're going for. So the narcissist may do some unethical things in order to get that promotion. You know, white collar crime comes to mind when I, when I mentioned that. So some narcissists or some who have a narcissistic personality, they're not above and beyond 
committing white collar crimes in order to get what they want in their during their careers or in a, a work setting. Okay. They'll do whatever they have to do to get the desired effect. The narcissist is sometimes worshiped and those who worship him will more than likely justify doing so perhaps due to emotional blackmail. Okay. This is one of the other tactics that narcissistic personality often uses emotional blackmail in order to manipulate the person to think, feel, and perhaps even behave in a way that will ensure that they will get the source supply. And sometimes narcissists end up, um, having people that are extremely loyal to him or her for life. Sometimes you find this in a dysfunctional family setting. Sometimes you'll find it in a business partnership. Sometimes you'll find it in a, a, a marriage, a, a best friend situation, right? Some people, unfortunately, will be very loyal to a narcissist that will never have the same amount of loyalty for him or her. Narcissists are loyal to their false self images from that of a saint to a martyr to a victim who cannot seem to catch a break in life. You know, they tend to sometimes have a, especially a covert narcissist tends to have a woe is me, right? That type of situation, that kind of energy, they come off like woe is me. All right. The whole world is against me, you know, or, or they come off like they're helpless. Again, this usually a covert narcissist is like this an overt narcissist. Now and then they may play that particular tactic, but usually this one is a covert narcissist. They like to come off like they're very helpless and they need you to rescue, save, or fix them some way or shape or form. Okay. Again, that's a, that's just a trap. The narcissist is sometimes worshiped. Unfortunately, usually those who are that loyal to the narcissist, right? They will often justify doing this. Okay. They will often go ahead and, you know, and again, you, again, you and I can see a narcissist do something that is so outlandish and outrageous, but those people who perhaps are very loyal to the narcissist, they will look at the same thing and they will say that perhaps you and I are overreacting. You know, we're not seeing what we're seeing or we don't know what we're talking about. It's called cognitive dissonance or denial, right? Unfortunately, you may see this in people who are extremely loyal to a narcissist to the point where they seem to be worshiping him or her. So emotional blackmail is often a part of that. Some people who are very loyal to a narcissist, there are several reasons why. Okay, they have some kind of skin in the game. They have some stake in it, right? The narcissist may be providing them financially. So they're in 100%. They're loyal to the narcissist because the narcissist may be paying their bills. You know, they're financially supporting them. And not only that, the narcissist may be emotionally there for him or her. Now, some people may be questioning, well, how can a narcissist be there emotionally for anyone when they tend to lack <laughs> the ability to not only feel empathy, but emotions for anyone, right? They don't tend to really get too emotional about anything, but this does not mean that he or she is a narcissist, but I am talking about those who have a narcissistic personality, right? Some people just, they don't get very emotional, but they're not a narcissist. Okay. Cause you will see them have sympathy and empathy for, for people. You will see them be good to people. You, you know that they're good people, right? But when we're talking about a narcissistic personality, lacking emotions, very often, often you will see them lack empathy as well. Okay. So they will often simulate an authentic emotion that there's your histrionic narcissist. So emotional blackmail is very possible, even by a narcissist. They will simulate, they will simulate, right? Expressing an authentic emotion. Simply put, they will pretend. And unfortunately, they can fool some people this way. 
okay? Because they, he or she may believe that the narcissist really cares when a narcissist doesn't. A histrionic narcissist, for instance, they will, I mean, <laughs> sometimes we call them drama kings and drama queens, but they are simulating, expressing an authentic emotion, such as anger or uh, sadness. Or they, sometimes they go off the deep end about something. Some people may say that uh, histrionic narcissists are overreacting about something because they fly off the handle and this sort of thing, right? They are very reactionary. But what they are doing again is pretending to express an authentic emotion. And how, the, how can they do that? Well, by studying other people, mimicking other people. So emotional blackmail is very uh, often what he or she will do as part of their, crime, their priming or grooming in order to manipulate and control other people in order to manipulate and control a situation in a narcissist's favor, right? Okay, so unfortunately, some people will seem to worship or have extreme loyalty to uh, a narcissist. And very often, you know, you may see this in a marriage, you may see this in a family situation more often than say a friendship or something or on a job or a career or something like that. Narcissists are very good with grooming others to think, feel, and behave in a way that, nar that the narcissist will receive source supply in their relationships with others. Okay, so I kind of went over that already, so let's move on. Cognitive dissonance, denial, and making excuses for the bad behavior of narcissist personality types are common dynamics in relationships with them. Okay, again, you know, we see this. Some of you have experienced this. You know, some people, especially, let, okay, let me go ahead and use a dysfunctional family as an example here. Okay, so um, uh, trigger warning here. Okay, trigger warning. So in a dysfunctional family, there may be a narcissistic parent and or grandparents, right? So let's just say uh, the, there, there's a situation where there's inappropriate, inappropriate attachments. Okay. That's going on in a dysfunctional family and this inappropriate behavior is by a narcissistic or, or a father figure, supposedly, right? A father figure who has narcissistic personality. So that bad behavior or inappropriate attachment may be towards one of the children or a little one, okay, in the dysfunctional family. Someone else in the dysfunctional family may notice this so-called bad behavior by the father who has a narcissistic personality, but they will make excuses for that inappropriate attachment style that he's displaying or his bad behavior, whereas it pertains to the other little one in the dysfunctional family. Okay. That's the best way I can paint that picture for you guys. All right. Cause sometimes this will happen. And this is due to cognitive dissonance and denial. So they will make excuses for the father figure who has a narcissistic personality. Okay. They will make excuses for his so-called bad behavior when it's pretty clear to some people, right? That this will be an inappropriate attachment to another family member. Okay, and that can be due to the age of the other family member. It can be due to the, the gender or something else, but it's definitely an inappropriate attachment. But some people in that setting or in that family setting may, and again, due to cognitive dissonance, denial, right? They may make excuses for this bad behavior of the father figure who has a narcissistic personality. Okay, let's move on. But all the while, what the narcissistic father is doing, he's priming, he's grooming 
And he's doing this. He's using these things as tactics to manipulate and control perhaps his uh, family. Okay. The perspective of mindset, the, per the perspective or mindset of narcissist personality is usually complex due to perhaps the compulsiveness to apply rigid methods in order to manipulate and control. Okay. So usually narcissistic personality types have a very rigid way in doing things, especially when it comes to relating to others, the way narcissists relate to others are often problematic. So the perspective or mindset of narcissistic personality is usually complex. Okay. It's pretty difficult to crack or to figure out. Okay. And sometimes this is due to compulsiveness to apply rigid methods. And usually nar narcissists <clears throat> will apply rigid methods in order to manipulate and control. So this means that really no one else can really, <laughs> you know, they, they really can't do anything in the relationship because they are having to, or they feel like they have to adhere to rigid methods. They have to, uh, they have to answer to the narcissist, right? They have to do what the narcissist says. The narcissist is being a bully in the, in the relationship, but other people, perhaps due to the emotional investment they have in the relationship, right? They may feel like they are obligated to accommodate these rigid methods when all the while the narcissist is priming him or her or them in order to manipulate and control that relationship. In any situation that may come up in that relationship, the narcissist wants control. So they will use manipulation tactics. They will prime, they will groom in order to do this. So, uh, you know, make no mistake, narcissists, they often do come off kind of complex anyway, but the mind of the narcissist, I mean, who can really ever know it? Okay. So the perspective or the mindset of narcissist personalities, they're usually quite complex. It can be confusing at times, um, very challenging to figure out. And sometimes the mindset or the perspective of the narcissist, it not only tends to be sometimes rigid, right. Or, 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 uh, um, not flexible at all or unwilling to adapt, unwilling to be flexible, right? Sometimes they may have a, um, a herd or a hive mentality. Now I'm speaking of the narcissistic personality here. Sometimes they may have a herd or a hive mentality. Okay. All right. So let's move on. And sometimes what I mean by that is that the narcissist may have take one for the team type of mentality especially if their way of thinking and doing or their behavior is exalted in a group, such as let's say their family may exalt or uplift the narcissist uh, and therefore enable the narcissist. So in that type of situation, the narcissist may have a herd or um, hive mentality, like take one for the team sort of thing. Therefore he's going to hold those same type of rigid standards to each family member, for example, Everybody better be willing to take one for the team, especially the narcissist. They better be willing to take one for the narcissist. Extreme loyal, you know, extreme loyalty and this sort of thing. When priming is used as a way of emotionally blackmailing, gaslighting and bullying others, as a result, there are some who might adopt the narcissist's rigid and unrealistic way of having relationships, risking enmeshment. Therefore, there can be identity crisis. Okay. A person who is extremely loyal to a narcissist, they may be worshiping the narcissist, right? They are emotionally uh, vulnerable to a narcissist. They are, in, in, they are emotionally invested in the narcissist, right? So they may begin to adopt the narcissist's rigid and unrealistic way of having relationships or relating to other people. So when they are experiencing enmeshment, this means that they can be, um, not really be able to, uh, 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, separateness. Okay. A separate, being a, a sense of self, right? Having a strong sense of self and being able to identify themselves versus narcissists or uh, saying, okay, the narcissist is who they are and I am who I am. And that's okay. Instead, there's like this, this, um, there, there are, uh, several types of toxic ties such as soul ties, right. Or spiritual ties. Okay. There may be, uh, I don't know, all types of toxic ties that we can think of. Right. So that goes along the lines of enmeshment. A person may not have a strong sense of self. They may not really know who they are outside of the narcissist relationship. They may not be able to imagine their life without having narcissist relationships. It can get that deep. It can become that deep. When a narcissist is priming or grooming a person, especially when you're talking about emotionally, yeah, they can actually end up risking becoming enmeshed with a narcissist. Therefore, they may start to display traits of a narcissist. They're not narcissists, right? But they can start to display some of their traits. What is that saying? Um, birds, of a feather, birds of the same feather flock together or something like that. Or be mindful of the company you keep because you might start to act like him or her. You know, these things come up for me when, I, when I'm speaking about this. If we're hanging around a narcissist, too long. We can start, we can start to, you know, they can kind of start to rub off on us. Right. So this is another reason why I think people are saying, not just from my own experiences though, but just listening to other people's testimony and having interacted with a few people who have had narcissists in their life. Right. I think the reason why they say it's best to just try to distance yourself from them is because of this reason right here, they can start to rub off on you. And adopting their rigid and unrealistic way of having relationships is not going to work out. This is why some people, I think, say that narcissists tend to be bad luck. Because <laughs> before you know it, their karma may start to bleed over into your life, into your existence. I'm pardon me, your reality. Okay, so this is why some, sometimes parallel reality is experienced. In narcissist relationships they are experiencing the relationship one way and you are experiencing it in another and of course the narcissist sees it as it being a favor to him or her they have the advantage because they are what manipulating and controlling the situation so everybody else is kind of hurting but the narcissist seems to be whistling in a wind you know they're seeing seemingly they're skating they're skating by they tend to have um uh, luck or dumb luck, you know, just <laughs> sometimes they seem to get away with things, but they don't foresee the consequences that ultimately they're going to have to uh, answer to due to pulling these types of shenanigans. Narcissists often salivate over the rewards that they think they're going to get in a situation, especially if they are overly confident in priming others and they're not suffering any consequences at that moment. For instance, narcissists, they may take a 30, the 30 pieces of silver, right? Due to betraying someone or doing something else horrible, right? They have their 30 pieces of silver, but narcissists often don't consider the cost of that 30 pieces of silver. Once they get it, they lack foresight. They tend to don't think that they make mistakes. Narcissists often will salivate over the rewards, but fail to consider the costs of source supply or actually having uh, their behavior the way they have it, right? Or their mindset, right? These outdated and rigid methods of having relationships are what makes relationships with narcissistic personality types dysfunctional, yet not a typical dysfunctional relationship. Okay, so let me break that down a little bit. When you're, when you're dealing with a narcissistic personality and they are in a dysfunctional relationship, right? What, what makes it not typical? Well, you're dealing with a cluster B personality type, borderline personality, antisocial personality. 
okay, narcissistic personality. All these clusters that make up the cluster B personality, histrionic personality, right? All of this makes up the cluster B personality type. And notice I only mentioned narcissistic one time. So when you're dealing with somebody who perhaps has been diagnosed by, the, by a mental health care practitioner as a cluster B personality type, they are not necessarily a narcissist. But every narcissistic personality has a cluster B personality type. So what makes this not your typical dysfunctional relationship? Well, because the cluster B personality type is a rigid, it's not flexible. It is a fixed personality type. Is a dysfunctional person is a dysfunctional relationship that is not typical because you're dealing with people who are not adapt, they will not adapt. They are unwilling to adapt in a relationship in order to make the relationship better if there's work that needs to be done in a relationship. If people need to heal in a relationship, the narcissist will be unwilling to do so. They're fixed, their personality, dysfun their personality disorder is fixed. It is not flexible. It won't give. It's not for the team. The narcissist is about the control, not the connection. There are some with other personality disorders who may not necessarily display or practice such rigid methods as a narcissist, right? He or she might be flexible and willing to adapt in order to improve relationships with other people. Okay, narcissists, they're not willing to do this. They are loyal, fiercely loyal to their false self images. So if they wanna come off looking like a saint, that is the false images that they are loyal to. They're not going to take one for the team, but they will expect the team to worship them and look at them as a saint. Okay. If they want to, if they're wearing the mask of a victim, same applies. The mask of a victim, same applies. All of these are applicable because the narcissist at the end of the day will do whatever it takes to maintain obtain control in every situation in all of their relationships with other people. So this doesn't sound like a person who is flexible and willing to adapt in order to what grow with a group. To me, this is one of the reasons of having a relationship is to grow with somebody else to grow together, whatever your, uh, your situation is, whatever ails you, right? Whatever your issues are, you can come together in a group and grow together. Narcissists don't do that. <laughs> okay. They don't even see it that way. They look at a group, size the group up and figure out how they can manipulate and control that group. And if they have to, they will infiltrate. Okay. The group in order to be at the top. If they're not at the top, they will infiltrate. They will infiltrate. Okay. They will facilitate that group with perhaps recruiting other people to play the dysfunctional role of a flying monkey, whatever it takes to get that group to bow down to the narcissist, the narcissist will be willing to do it anywhere from, and again, this is part of the priming anywhere from recruiting others to, to play the dysfunctional role of a flying monkey or flying monkeys. The narcissist will do that because the flying monkeys work for the narcissist. The flying monkeys will not work for you. Okay. They work for the fly. They work for the narcissist. And unfortunately, after the narcissist is done or a mission has been accomplished, they will discard those who play the dysfunctional role of flying monkey. Okay. This is often the case, even in a, I don't care what kind of group it is. It can be a family. That is the first group that we are all introduced to when we are born. The family, the narcissist will, unfortunately, they will wreak a lot of havoc in that group. It can be a business situation or a corporate situation. It can be um, a friend or social setting. It doesn't matter. Colleagues, uh, so, uh, associates, 
friendships, whatever. The narcissist is there to be top dog, no matter what. So they will do what it takes. They will prime, they will groom others to bend to their will. Okay. And get rid of those who do not. <clears throat> After the experience of having relationships with narcissist personality types, it seems that faith has been lost in the narcissist's ability to change their mentality and behavior patterns in order to have healthy relationships. Narcissists are, I mean, they're just very difficult to get along with in a, in a narcissist relationship. Okay. Doesn't mean that some people haven't made it happen now. <laughs> but I will say this, a lot of people who have had the experience of having relationships with narcissistic personality types, okay, and I'm speaking from experience here, it seems that fate, and I'm also basing this off of my experience, not just my research, and not just from interacting with other people who have shared their testimonies. I'm saying all that to say that it seems like people are losing their faith in the narcissist's ability to change their mentality and behavior patterns in order to have healthy relationships with other people, period. Okay, narcissists, you know, to me, the narcissist personality right now is finding it more and more difficult to keep the mask affixed, to keep it on. They're getting, they seem to me, they're getting tired of tolerating other people by pretending to have morals. Okay, this just seems to be the case to me. I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm, I notice that every now and then, okay? So it just seems like they're finding it a little bit more challenging now. Those who have a narcissist personality, they just seem to be finding it a little bit more challenging to keep up the facade, the charade. Okay, let's move on. So people, well, kind of getting tired of their shenanigans. Okay. Signs of priming behavior patterns to watch out for paranoia, predatory aims. He or she may have predatory aims, right? Consistently testing loyalty. See the narcissist, they want you to be loyal, but they will not be loyal. Okay. Not to you, not to a lot of other people, right? They, they will not be loyal, but they, they expect they have a strong sense of entitlement right? They expect the loyalty without being loyal. Making false accusations, fixation or obsession, sexualizing non-sexual issues, false narratives, and as I mentioned, strong sense of entitlement. There are a lot more, but these are some of the things that I could just come up right off the top of my head, right? So paranoia, Narcissists often are looking over their shoulders, thinking that the whole world is against him or her and that they are after somebody is after them. Somebody wants to harm them. OK, when it may not even hold merit, some of their fears may ne will not even hold merit. Sometimes this goes right into how narcissists sometimes want to play the victim, but they're not victims. They'll play the victim. So when they're grooming or they're priming, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for you to perhaps behave like a person who has codependent issues. You are to save, rescue, or fix something in the narcissist's life. When all the while, they're not helpless at all. They might be laughing the whole time that you are bending yourself up in the pretzel or jumping through fiery hoops in order to save, fix, or rescue him or her from an imaginary situation. Okay. Predatory aims. Sometimes narcissists, I mean, that's simply, uh, that's pretty self-explanatory though. Uh, they usually have predatory aims, especially when they see that they can get a lot of supply, such as in a, a, a family setting or some other uh, group, whereas they are the leader. Okay. Jim Jones comes to mind. Okay. When I say that, uh, predatory aims. For those of you who don't uh, know who Jim Jones is, he was a person who, um, he, well, yeah, he was a person who was considered a cult leader. So he would groom the group to do, to say, okay, or to feel, or to behave in a particular way, right? 
consistently testing loyalty. Narcissists, again, they don't value your loyalty to them, but you, even though they want you to be loyal, but they don't value it. They have a, because they have a strong sense of entitlement. So they don't value it, but they expect it. So they will consistently test your loyalty. You would think that they will show gratitude. Uh, uh, <laughs> narcissists will not show that they appreciate you. If anything, they may show, they may slip the, the mask may slip every now and then. And what you will find is that they're tolerating you long enough to get the source supply from you. Okay. So making false accusations, they will falsely accuse you of cheating them or slighting them. A lot of the times when narcissists perceive slights, the key word is perceive is not even reflective of reality. And unfortunately, when you show signs that you are outgrowing the narcissist relationships, sometimes the narcissist will uh, behave as if they're offended by that. They, they don't approve of it. They may false, they may make a false accusation such as you're being mean spirited because now you have this, because this new you, right? You have a newly found confidence. Now, perhaps you're more vocal about things. Narcissists will not approve that. They will probably make a false accusation that you are a bad person or a negative person. Perhaps they will falsely accuse you of being a narcissist. Go figure. Okay. Fixation or obsession. Sometimes narcissists will uh, have this fixation or obsession about something. They will compulsively uh, wash, rinse, and repeat some of these uh, tactics here in order to manipulate and control a situation. Okay. So they will repeat certain tactics. They're like a person who is just obsessed. They are fixated on it. It has a compulsive energy to it. Sexualizing non-sexual issues. Sex is coming up in the conversation. They will sexualize things negatively or positively sometimes, believe it or not. So uh, narcissists, sometimes they will sex, they will, use, they will sexualize things that, that has name has anything to do with sex. Okay. So sometimes they may be describing, uh, or giving you a hypothetical question, but they will sexualize it. Right. And it can be, again, it can be a, a conversation that has nothing to do with sex, but they will bring sex in the, into the conversation. False narratives. Okay. Again, that kind of goes into the, uh, making false accusations, but the false narratives go something like this. Uh, narcissists will sometimes create a false narrative of someone else. They often create false images or false narratives of everyone. Yes. Everyone that they are obtaining source supply from. I don't care if this is a family member. I don't care if this is a friend of somebody who thinks that the narcissist is a friend, uh, a business associate. I don't care who it is. Narcissists often will create false images of everyone that they obtain source supply from in order to tolerate them long enough to obtain or maintain source supply. False narratives. Sometimes these scripts are written and narcissists will flip the script in order to, uh, I guess, get a leg up in a situation such as a third party situation. Narcissists often have a network of third party situations, but the false narratives are often what will, um, favor the narcissist, or at least he or she hopes that it will favor him or her. It conveniences them and no one else. So these false narratives, uh, like again, they will create a false image of you. In other words, they may say that you're a narcissist when actually you're not. Okay. And they will try to get other people to believe it. They may smear a campaign. They may gaslight others into believing that false narrative that they will often stick to about you, right? Or anyone else that they're obtaining source supply from. Again, uh, Smear campaigning goes hand in hand with the false narratives. The gaslighting can play into it too. Again, all of this is priming. They're priming everybody. They're grooming everybody. The narcissist is grooming everyone. The, the narcissist is priming everyone. So these false narratives actually end up convincing only the narcissist. 
Because once they use the smear campaigning and the gaslighting and convincing others, for instance, that you're a bad person, unfortunately, some people will believe that and treat you that way when it's not even true. But it conveniences, that false narrative conveniences the narcissist. Strong sense of entitlement. Before I get to that, the false narratives again. I did a few videos and live streams just a couple of months ago about women who may have the good daughter complex. They're trying to please, some of them are trying to please their narcissistic moms. Narcissistic moms tend to write a false narrative of their daughters. And then they proceed by trying to get everybody else to believe those false narratives about her daughter. Narcissistic mom may say something like this. Oh, I'm such, you know, she might try to come off like a victim. She may say, well, my daughter is a problem. And she constant, well, not constantly, but consistently will repeat this to other people until they start to believe it. Some of them anyway. And the daughter, unfortunately, will end up experiencing bad behavior of not only narcissistic mom, but other people who believe the false narrative that she is a problem. Narcissistic mom often sees herself as a victim in the scenario. She has a daughter who's giving her problems, so she's a victim. So narcissistic moms often will write a false narrative in order to convince herself. Okay, in order to, uh, it's almost like the narcissistic mom has a mission in life to believe that her daughters or daughters give her a problem. They're a problem, okay? She rarely sees the gifts in, in her daughters. She don't see her daughter as, as a gift. So she will smear a campaign her daughter. She will gaslight her daughter into believing it. Not only is the daughter to believe these false narratives, but everyone else is too, right? Everybody else is to believe it. So the narcissistic mom will come off as being the, the, the person who is to be worshiped, to be uplifted. And don't get me wrong, it's wonderful to be a mother. It's, it's awesome, right? However, when you have a female who has a narcissistic personality and she has a daughter, sometimes this is what you find. She will create false narratives of her daughter. So she will flip the script. She will rewrite the script in order to what? Prime. It's part of the priming. It's a part of, of the grooming of others in order for her to manipulate and control the relationships and the situations that come up in those relationships. Strong sense of entitlement, pretty self-explanatory. Narcissists often have a strong sense of entitlement. They think that they nobody should say no to them. The narcissists think they should get whatever they want, whenever they want it, however they want it. But of course we know this is not reality, but you can't tell a narcissist that. Okay, tool number one, take steps to allow yourself to question anything narcissist personality might attempt to convince you of, especially if it's about you. Tool number two, practice mindfulness in order to assist with overcoming the aftermath of narcissist relationships. Okay, so uh, the first tool, take steps to allow yourself to question anything the narcissist personality might attempt to convince you of, okay, especially if it's about you. I touched on this earlier when I was given the analogy about um, the narcissist perhaps calling you a narcissist, right? I mean, really, the nerve. <laughs> but let's just say this is the, the case. The narcissist is gaslighting you or maybe they're smear campaigning and they're attempting to get you to believe or they're trying to convince you that you are a bad person. You're the problem in the relationship, right? Because they can't get you to cooperate with him or her or their shenanigans. See, again, the narcissist is about the control, not the connection. So allow yourself to start questioning, especially when you get that little... Uh, uh, the inner voice starts to talk to you, you know, your, 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 your intuition, right? When, when it's telling you, look, the narcissist is, is saying some stuff and I don't, I don't know. Right. So don't be afraid to question, give yourself permission to question, challenge it. I'm not saying, uh, fight fire with fire. I'm not saying be confrontational with the narcissist. Absolutely not. But use your mind, right? It's Okay. You, ha you have a mind. You Go ahead and use it. There's nothing wrong with questioning with the narcissist. 
is trying to attempt you to what they're attempting to convince you of. Okay. Sometimes narcissists will pull a telekinesis. What is that? Narcissistic personalities sometimes will pull a telekinesis when they are attempting to alter your sense of time and reality. Where else but a narcissist relationship does a narcissist really, you know, they, they're king with that. They're queen with that. They, they do that a lot. They're masters at it. So when they're trying to, uh, you know, when they're trying to convince you of something, don't, don't, you know, go ahead and question it. You don't have to believe it wholeheartedly and just take it at face value. Practice mindfulness. What does mindfulness consist of? Being assertive. Okay. Practicing boundaries, personal boundaries, self-preservation. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with this. And practicing emotional discipline. All of these things go right up under uh, the umbrella of uh, mindfulness. And when you're doing all of that, a narcissist is probably one or two things going to happen. They're not going to want to fool with you, <laughs> right? Because they're going to just give up, throw their hands up and give up and say, okay, I can't get nothing out of this person. I can't control this person, right? Or they're going to, you know, they may try to turn up on the tactics. But again, practice safety. I say this a lot, okay? I, or I say this repeatedly in my videos. Practice safety. Okay. I would not suggest, and I do not advocate you going head to head with a narcissist, especially if you think that they may fly off the deep end. Some narcissists do not make idle threats. Sometimes they make good on those. Okay. So practice mindfulness in order to assist with overcoming the aftermath of narcissist uh, relationships. All right. Um, Next two, take off the rose-colored glasses by accepting that you are perhaps outgrowing narcissistic relationships while your narcissist might not ever change. This one, I'm telling y'all from personal experience, this is just sometimes this can be a very challenging one right here, is to finally face the reality that the narcissist is not going to change. I broke down the cluster B personality type earlier in the live stream. Okay. They tend to be rigid in their methods of relating to others, but their personality, according to the DSM-5, okay, that type of personality is fixed. It is less likely to change. It is less likely to be flexible and to adapt in order to get along with it and play, light, and play nicely with others, <laughs> right? So perhaps you're starting to realize that the narcissist will not change, but you are changing. You're outgrowing the narcissist relationship. Narcissists often don't forgive those who outgrow him or her or pass or, or out, not only outgrow them, but grow past them. Narcissists are under arrested development. Okay. They can be 60 years old and they still are up under arrested development. So narcissists tend to not take no for an answer. They tend to not ironically face the reality that you are outgrowing the relationship. They're not going to change folks. Okay. All right. Next two, build and navigate your support base designed to provide you an emotionally safe place to express what you have experienced. Sometimes it's hard to express what you have experienced. Some people numb out emotionally. This is understandably so considering they, that they have experienced a narcissist relationship. Okay. So it is very common that people uh, are uh, experiencing challenges after the narcissist relationship is over. Speaking from experience, okay? So build and navigate your support base, which is supposed to be designed to provide you in an emotionally safe place to express what you have experienced. Think about the ordeal that you've gone through. The narcissist relationship is not emotionally safe. Oh, it's not an emotionally safe place. The narcissist is not emotionally safe for anybody. Okay. Sometimes a narcissist personality, some people have found that the narcissist personality, yeah, they're just too toxic, right? They're not going to help provide in an emotionally safe place in a narcissist relationship. It, you know, a narcissist relationship is not designed to have any peace, harmony, or balance. Okay. It's not a healthy relationship. Okay. 
uh, next tool, become more educated in the aftermath of narcissism, narcissist personality types, priming and grooming tactics that bullies often use in order to manipulate others in situations for control. So become a little bit more educated about this stuff. Okay, it's going to help you. More than likely, it's going to prove to be a game changer once you, you learn a little bit more about this. Narcissists don't count on people to be able to uh, learn a little bit more about this, yet alone become more aware of it. So I want to encourage everybody today to, of course, share this live stream and share, share your story, your experiences with narcissism. This is something that um, I'm actually glad more and more people are talking about and bringing awareness to. So I want to encourage you guys to do that. Okay, so I, another thing I want to add to sometimes when you see some people who are fiercely loyal to a narcissist, there are a few things that you might notice about him or her. Uh, they may be obsessed with the relationship with the narcissist. Okay, so they may also go the extra mile, but yet they're being breadcrumbed by a narcissist. But the narcissist is not going to go the extra mile for them unless they go the extra mile or to take time out of their life to uh, perhaps mistreat them in some kind of way, sh shape or form. One up, you know, fierce competition and things like this. Narcissists will take time out of their life to go the extra mile for that. Yeah, because they want the source supply. They want, they want the control, not the connection. Some people may be very defensive. If you bring the narcissist up in conversation, you may be concerned about the narcissist's behavior, right? That person who is fiercely loyal to a narcissist, they may become very defensive. They might start uh, projecting onto you, right? The things that they don't want to deal with. Overall, health could be compromised, but yet they won't see it. You may be a person who has perhaps decided that the narcissist relationship is not for you, but that person, they're still cool with the narcissist, right? And they don't want to speak about what's going on. They don't want to talk about the pink elephant in the room. So when a narcissist has people who are fiercely loyal to him or her like that, please understand that you might start seeing some of these things and those individuals, you may love them. You may care for them. But what is that saying? You can take a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink it. Some of you have loved ones who are fiercely loyal to a narcissistic person or a person who has a narcissistic personality or perhaps another cluster B personality. And something I want to say about the cluster B personality type or types, some of them do see the writing on the wall. So they are going to a mental health care practitioner. They're going somewhere, right? Because they're not as flexible. Pardon me. They are flexible. They care about their relationships. They know the way they, that they relate to people are pro problematic. They know this, but that's a very small percentage. Okay, so I do want to say that this live stream is not for those individuals, right? I'm not talking about them. Pardon me, I don't mean it's not for them. They can watch it too, but this is not for them. I'm speaking of those who don't see the writing on the wall, who have narcissistic personality. Also, you know, they're not seeing the right on the wall. They don't care about their relationships. They are mistreating people, right? This is what I'm talking about. Sometimes they will use grooming and priming as tactics to control and manipulate others. Next tool, remember that your life has purpose. While you're experiencing a gift called life and that your story has merit enough to be shared with others who might become inspired by it. Okay, put, put your voice to it. It's going to take some time and practice for some of you to start using your voice. It's okay, because in a narcissist relationship, you better not have a voice. According to the narcissist, you better not have an identity, and you better not have a voice. But when you start to practice, okay, this, right, this focus tool, you're going to start, naturally it's going to come to you to start using your voice. And you're going to realize who you are outside of the narcissist relationship. You do have an identity, right? The narcissist think your mission in life is to source, supply him or her. They think that is your identity. They create false images. Okay, so they don't know who you are, yet they try to tell you who you are. They, they have false images, but they're going to sit up there and tell you who you are? Go figure. I mean, that's, that's crazy to me. That's ridiculous. 
How is a person who has false images going to tell me who I am? They can't. They have false images. They have false self images and they create false images of me and everyone else. So how can that person really tell you who you are? That, that's, that's a perfect place. I mean, that's a perfect um, incident right there where you can start to question what they're telling you. The narcissist is trying to smear, smear campaign or they're trying to tell you something about yourself and it's not really sitting right with you. So question it. It's okay to challenge what they tell you, what a narcissist may say, if, especially if your inner voice is, if your intuition is telling you that's not quite right. So remember, your life does have purpose. You're not here to just be so supplied to narcissists. And all of us do have a story, right? We all have a story. We're all in, on this journey called life. Critical question number one, list or name at least three traits that you possess that have nothing to do with the narcissist or your narcissist, right? Critical question number two, what is the purpose of your relationship or relationships with narcissistic personality types? Okay, and I wanna really challenge you guys to answer this one. What is the purpose of the relationship? Because once you answer, and I've done this by the way, I have answered that question. What is the purpose of your relationship with the narcissistic personality type? Or it could be a cluster B personality type in your instance, right? Or in, in your situation. What is the purpose of the relationship? Get down to that. And more than likely, you're going to find that to be a game changer because it's going to provide you clarity. Once you answer that question, it's going to provide you clarity. Another thing I want to add to that is once a person learns a valuable lesson that perhaps was very painful, they're not going to have to repeat that scenario because they learn. Therefore, they graduate. So if you have learned something about a narcissist, right, you were once involved with, and this is not just romantically, but you were involved, you had narcissists in your life at one time, right? When you learn some valuable lessons behind that, you didn't have to repeat it. So once you learn valuable lessons that perhaps did cause you, you know, some challenges, right, some, some pain, you're not going to have to repeat it once you learn it. So I, when I look at this question, I think about that. What is the purpose of your relationship with the narcissistic personality type or cluster B personality type, right? What is the purpose of that relationship? Not why you're having the relationship necessarily. Not why you think you have to continue it. Not why you think the relationship is in your life. Try to look at it like what is the real purpose of the relationship? What is it really doing for you? Is it aiding you right now or is it blocking you right now? Very profound question. Next critical question. What is the most effective focus tool that you practice while it continues to prove desirable results? Would you recommend this focus tool and why? Okay. Now I just went over a few things like the focus tool that I usually like to talk about is the support base. Have a support base. Support base can consist of a lot of things, not just going to a mental health care practitioner, which I do advocate, by the way. But if that is not a part of your support base, and you have other elements that consist of your support base, but you find out it working is working for you, that's fantastic. Okay, so which focus tool would you recommend and why? And does it prove to give you desirable des results? Okay. Now I often like to talk about mindfulness. That's one that I still practice today and I find it to give me desirable results. So I would recommend that one for you, right? I would recommend that practicing mindfulness. Some people may say, Oh, you know, that doesn't really work, but have you tried it? <laughs> so yeah. Uh, practicing mindfulness. Okay, that was my answer. All right, the references and resources are in the description box below, but you simply can select slide presentation to get these references here that you see. Okay, all right. All right, all right, all right. So that's going to include the slide here. All right. Okay, guys, 
Uh, thank you again for joining me today. And wherever you are right now, I certainly hope you are doing very well. I know there's a lot of uh, interesting things that are going on right now. But, um, you know, go ahead and try to take care of yourself as best as you can. Okay. And on that note, one of the things that I want to challenge you guys to do is to and keep a healthy daily meal vlog. Okay. I've done a few videos about this, just some healthy meal ideas, right? Okay. So for instance, you know, I have my little water here and I have found that when I eat a little bit more healthy, I feel better. And when you're dealing with a narcissist, the last thing you want to do is make yourself feel badly. The narcissist does that enough, right? <laughs> so I want to just go ahead and challenge you guys to not only look at these focus tools that I shared with you, but also start to, you know, or at least consider keeping a daily healthy meal vlog. Because when you start to eat a little bit better, right, you will start to feel a little bit better. The narcissist, again, is... Yeah, they, they really, this, this you that they may notice may be something that they don't, you know, they don't really approve, but who cares what they think anyway, right? <laughs> this is about you. This is your life. Until next time, take care of yourself as well as each other. Now, before I go, I will check if you guys have any comments. I want to encourage you guys to leave comments now. Okay. Questions and things of this sort. All right. So I want to thank everybody again for joining me and stay tuned for more live streams, more content such as videos and podcast episodes. Now, for you guys who are members of the channel, Luminous Star, I want to thank you for becoming members. Tomorrow, I will be doing a commentary for members only. There's a video, the link in the description box below by Nyla Vibes. Her channel is fantastic. I've watched a few videos and I want to thank Nyla for sharing a particular video that she did recently. I watched that video, guys, and I'm going to do a commentary on that video tomorrow, but I'm going to be for me only, okay? <laughs> so uh, this, I'm just going to give you a snip, uh, synopsis. It's about uh, Kevin Samuels and there was a woman that he had as a as a guest, right? She called in and she's a single mother. But what I noticed that Canvas Samuels was doing was he was asking this woman, you know, who's a single mother, uh, particular questions. And not to give a lot away, but there were certain things on there that I saw that really concerned me, guys. So stay for that commentary, but it's only going to be for members only. Okay. So until next time, take care guys. Mwah.